You know, in the modern day where wearing Crocs with socks and leaving the house is somehow acceptable, it appears that efficiency and comfort have taken a front seat. So why should guitar be any different? Today we're going to talk about what I think some of the biggest mistakes are when playing efficiently and comfortably are on a guitar. And I am not wearing Crocs and I will never wear Crocs. I'm sorry. It seems like it's a super cool thing that people are doing, but I'm not going to follow that. I'm with the boomers on this one, guys. <laughs> I don't even know if that's accurate. Anyways, the number one thing that I think everybody could benefit right off the bat is playing a G chord like this no further unless it's contextual, okay? This is how everybody should start playing a G major chord. Right here, with your ring finger on the G on the E string third fret, middle finger on the second fret A string, pinky third fret on the B string, okay? And we're gonna talk about why this is. First of all, we're gonna talk about it in the most common key that you're gonna come across, the key of C, all right? G is a chord in the key of C. We're also gonna talk about it in the other common keys, like the people's key of G major and D major, and talk about contextually when you wanna play this way versus this way, because there is a pretty big difference, especially depending on the type of music that you're using, right? So first of all, let's go through why this is so important to learn with your ring finger first in the key of C, okay? So C major, you probably already know a little bit right here. Ring finger, third fret on the A string, middle finger, second fret on the D string, open G, first fret on the B string, pointer finger, all the way down, right? Now it just look, go, go from C to G. Look how efficient that is. It's basically like leaving your apartment with your Crocs on and just giving no cares about what others think about you and the ridicule coming, right? That's such an easy switch to make and also, one thing that I find myself doing all the time now, as compared to when I was a beginner, is playing a C major chord like this, a C slash G chord. Especially if you're doing solo acoustic stuff, you really want that extra bass note in there. Right? So much easier than this, C to G. That's a jump that it scares me just to see myself doing that. That's so much easier, but not even just that contextually, the rest of the chords in this key are so much easier to play. So let's run through all the chords in the key of C, right? We got C major, and just watch the efficiency of the hand movements here. The one chord, C, the two chord, D minor, the three chord, E minor, the four chord, F, the five chord, G major, the six chord, A minor, back to C. You barely have to move your fingers, and it's so helpful, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate player, to assign the ownership of a fret to a finger. So going through all those chords, with the exception of one time, my fingers are locked into certain frets, okay? What that means is my ring finger and my pinky will always be on the third fret, one of the strings. My middle finger is responsible for the second fret, whichever string, and my pointer finger is responsible for the first, first fret, whichever string, right? Again, there's that C major. You'll notice these two are locked. My ring finger and pinky are on the third fret. So when I go to D minor, I just have to go down. I just have to locate the right string instead of trying to like take my whole hand off and then reform on a different chord, you know, maybe like this, something like that. It's really just a matter of locating which one that you're going to. Now, the one, uh, you know, that kind of gives you an issue is E minor, right? Because you need two frets uh, fretted on the A and the D string, just like that, right? So E minor just happens to be the easiest chord anyway, so you're fine there. That's the one exception. And then the other one would be A minor, which you can play as A minor seven, just like that, right? So again, C major, D minor, E minor, there we go, the ring finger kind of pulled double duty, got to the second fret. F major, we're playing not as a bar chord, I mean that would still count as the frets being assigned, but we're playing it with your ring finger, pinky, middle, pointer, and then I'm not actually hitting the outside E strings, unless I want to get that open E right there, and there's that G major, A minor, 7, which sounds better anyways. Right? See, there's regular A minor, you could lift your ring finger off it to keep kind of what we're doing here. 
just like that, okay? So, those are the six main chords in the key of C, all being played super efficiently just by having the same fingers on the same frets all the time. So, this video is actually sponsored by Sweetwater while you get those fingerings under your belt. Uh, you may have noticed I'm using a DPA 4099 microphone on the guitar. I'm doing some experimenting this month with trying to get like the best sound which is perfect right now because I have the gardener out there. So that's why it's great to have a directional, couldn't have worked out better. I paid that gardener to show up right now because I have a directional mic that is just getting like a super high quality sound with this. I've actually, uh, I've gigged live with these before because I really kind of hate the sound of direct out acoustic guitar. You can just actually clamp this. They have these, this rubber footed clamp that you put on the body of the guitar. I'm rocking the Breedlove Organic Pro right now. Great sounding guitar to you. And uh, it just clamps your guitar. It's not going to damage your guitar. And then it has a gooseneck so you can kind of like, you know, pivot it and stuff. Like I said, I'll link you to a video where I played live uh, and just like a show with this. Again, you know, it's super versatile. It's not going to fall off. And it sounds great. And, uh, you can clip it to a, a body clip right here. And then just have XLR. I'm just going XLR to the interface. But thank you so much to Sweetwater for sending over the mic and the guitar. So I will link you in the description with affiliate links on both of those. Let me know if you have any questions. But let's talk about some other keys where this is also going to be super helpful and efficient. Okay. One thing that you might say is like, well, what about if I'm playing in the key of G? Wouldn't it make more sense to just use this traditional fingering? Well, it, it can be depending on how you're playing contextually, right? One main thing that you know you may run across is the little the old the old oasis trick where you kind of like anchor maybe your ring finger or your ring finger and your pinky to the wonderwall chord, right? <laughs> however, however you play wonderwall, I'm so I'm so cool that I forgot how to play wonderwall. But the nice thing about the context there is you can play most of that G C D E while having it anchored. But in the key of G, if we start with your ring finger leading the way, we can still do the same thing. So let's go through the chords in the key of G kind of using the same idea, right? We've got G major here. The two chord in G is A minor. We can do the same thing, right? A minor seven is the one chord to the two chord. B minor, I'm doing this kind of creative voicing of it instead of doing the bar chord voicing. You can do this version here where your middle finger is still just hanging out on the second fret. Your pinky is on the third fret of the B string, kind of like that G chord is. And then you just swing your ring finger to the second fret on the G string. So if I'm in a if I'm in an efficiency crunch and I want to play a B minor, but I don't want to go to the bar chord, I, you know, this counts. Uh, a slight difference for sure, but just a different voicing that you could use. Uh, yeah, that's the three chord. Then we can go to the C, just like before. D, like this. Everybody likes to get that F sharp bass inversion of D major in. And then we have the same thing with the E minor. And then if you want to get like an F sharp half diminished, you can do that. Back to G. But again, I think for most cases, most use cases, even in the key of G, one, One, that's still gonna be more efficient than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. But again, it depends on the chord progression in the song that you're using. It's not that this is technically better than leading with your middle finger. I just think personally, in more examples in this key, it's more efficient to lead with your ring finger. Now, the one place that I will say it's super helpful to use this voicing where your middle finger is leading the way is actually when G is the four chord in the key of D major, right? Because there's our D major chord. So now let's go through the chords in the key of D that you might find, right? D is the one chord. E minor is the two chord. F sharp minor, this is minor seven, is the three chord. There's a natural way to go from like that F sharp minor seven or even a full bar chord f sharp minor right there into that and then a major is the five chord in the key of d my pointer finger is already in line right there for that a 
if I want to play B minor, the sixth chord in the traditional way, I'm already right there. And then I go back to D. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Whereas in the key of C, one, Okay? One other way that I want to talk about why this is important is if you're playing finger style. I do think that having like a, let's do a very super, super basic progression in the key of C for some context. So C, F, A minor, G, right? Tons of songs that you can play with that. If I'm playing finger style, I'm really kind of going back and forth between bass notes, right? So that's why I really like this C slash G voicing because I can get that finger style vibe in there, right? And then I'm going back and forth between the A and the E string. So now I'm gonna go to an F. It's, it's easier to do it that way, right? So I'm getting this kind of efficiency right there, right? Especially, you know, you'll always see stuff resolve from like a five to a one, right? So one. Four, six, five, C, five, one. So again, these are just like a ton of different practical kind of tips and tricks of playing. And that's why leading here and thinking of assigning ownership to these frets, I think is like a really, really important way to kind of go about. And just learning guitar and just kind of tightening things up. And especially when you do like uh, moving bass line things, which is something that happens not just in finger style, but in like a lot of different things. You'll have, let's say I want to take this C bass note and I want to walk it all the way back to G, right? I'm going back through the scale to G. C over B over A to G, C. Right? And now if I were to do that in the traditional way, C. So again, you know, you can do it, but like that's so, that's so much more, it's so inefficient. That's like wearing boots and socks out to a fancy formal dinner instead of just putting on your Crocs. <laughs> I'm still living. No shade to people who wear Crocs. I I've never I've never tried them, but they don't seem to be that comfortable. Can somebody please let me know in the description or the in the comments like what the what the appeal is with Crocs? Maybe I just need to maybe I just need to try it. Maybe I'm being salty and I'm not. Huh? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. But anyways, I think that's just uh, something that's really important just to think about, right? what's the most efficient way I can be playing this song? Because that's something that I didn't give any any thought to when I was first starting out. I'd be like, all right, I got to get these bar chords down and then efficiency, what, whatever, out the window. I'm just worried about getting my fingers down. But if I actually would have thought, I'd be like, all right, well, I'm going from this D to A to G. Maybe I should learn, you know, how to do this and this instead of D major, A major, G major like this, right? And then just kind of find common common touchstones of where your fingers are going. Like I said, with that D, just having it anchor the whole time. It makes it makes changing chords so much easier. Trust me, you're gonna, you're gonna be happy that you spent some time doing it. So thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Thank you to DPA Microphones and Read Love for sounding over the microphone and the guitar. Let me know what you think the sound is like. Uh, because yeah, I just think, Especially for finger style stuff, that like. It just kind of, it picks up the attack so much better. And you know, you can use it live, you can use it in the studio. Great mic, great guitar. If you have any questions or comments, I will talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.